Is this the best stock trading PC build for 2025? Let's find out. What's up guys? Welcome back to another Geek video. It's been a while since I built a stock trading PC build and today I'll be building another one uh, and I'll be sharing it with you guys. But before we get into the part list, let's go into who this PC build is really for. Every use case and workflow is different and it's important to understand the thought process behind the parts that I chose. Maybe his use case is more intense than what you're doing or you're running different software. I want you to come out of this video with the mindset on how to choose parts. So let's get into it. Liam is a trader running Thinkorswim, Ninja Trader, and TC2000 for charting. And on the side, like many traders, he has news feeds coming in and he's running Discord in the background. And what makes this build unique is that he's using OBS to capture and record his trades and teach them to others. Looking at the set of software he's using, Thinkorswim, Ninja Trader, and OBS are by far the most intensive. Thinkorswim is a single threaded application, meaning it's gonna benefit from chips with strong single core performance. Look at metrics like a high clock speed and a high IPC or instructions per clock. NinjaTrader is a multi-threaded application, meaning it's gonna benefit most from CPUs with multiple cores and it scales really well with the additional cores that you add. And he's also running OBS in the background and during high market activity while recording with OBS, a chip with many cores is needed so you don't see any performance dips. So I went with the Ryzen 9 9900X. This is a 12 core chip with super strong single threaded performance. The main reason why I went with this is I could have gone with the 9700X, which is the Ryzen 7 model. That only has eight cores, but since he's running OBS in the background, the extra four cores will help with not seeing performance dips and things like that during high market activity and doing a lot of trades. Same thing with memory. He's using a lot of software. Thinkorsim, NinjaTrader, OBS, Newsfeed, Discord, that's gonna chew up a lot of RAM in the background. So I went with 32 gigabytes of T-Force Vulcan Z, 32 gigabytes at 6,000 megahertz. This is a good range for capacity. And if he wants to upgrade to 64 in the future, he has those two slots ready to go. Just plug them in and you're good to go. And again, it's good to think about where you're gonna be three to five years down the line. He didn't need 64 gigs right now, nor did he need 48. 32 will be fine, but if his workload ever intensifies in the future, he can always add more RAM. Before we get to the other parts in the build, to cool this chip, I went with the Noctua NHD15S. The most important aspect for any workstation is reliability. The last thing you want is your PC to shut down or you have to send it into the shop for a few days and you're missing revenue. AIOs, all-in-one liquid coolers, have gone much better in the past four to five years with longer lifespans, but still, you have more moving parts which means it's more prone to failing in the future. Plus, they're more difficult to replace. The Noctua NHD15S is a dual tower air cooler, meaning it has two heat sinks, and it only has one fan, meaning that if anything were to go wrong and Noctua fans are really reliable, I've had no issues with them, which is why I keep going with them. All he has to do is buy a fan online and replace it. On top of this, my client wanted a silent build. In his words, his current system sounds like a quote, leaf blower, so I added a low noise adapter for the Noctua fan that comes with the cooler, so it runs at lower RPMs, meaning less noise, but still good performance. As for motherboards, don't put too much thought into it. Any mid-range to high-end motherboard is gonna be fine. He's not overclocking, so he doesn't need the extra, you know, VRM stuff with higher motherboards. All he needed was a lot of USB expansion. So I went with the Gigabyte AORS B650 Elite AX version two. This is a motherboard I've used dozens of times and it's never given me an issue, which is why I keep going with it. I know I can rely on it and I know it's reliable through my experience. So that's why I went with this board. It also has 10 USB ports in the back for his USB expansion requirement. As for storage, this is an overlooked part of the build sometimes. Let's say something were to happen with your PC and it randomly shuts down. 
You want to be able to get back into your software as fast as possible. So an NVMe SSD at PCI 4.0 speeds is going to be great. You'll be able to load into your operating system really fast, as well as load into your software fast as well. So I went with the WD Black SN 850X, one terabyte, and then I added a two terabyte SATA SSD in the back for all the OBS recordings that he's going to be saving onto this PC. All of this is sitting inside the Fractal Pop Air. My client had a really unusual request. He wanted a CD drive. I know, I haven't heard of those in a while. And only a few cases in the market support a five and a quarter inch drive bay, and the Fractal Pop Air is one of them. I've used the Fractal Pop Air series in the past, and they're solid cases to work in. The only issue I have with it is the fans are extremely loud. It's only around a $90 case, so it's fine. They, it comes with three included ARGB fans, which is great, but they're only three pin, meaning they're voltage regulated and they're extremely loud. So I switched out the fans with three Be Quiet Silent Wings 3. These are extremely quiet. You can barely hear them. Again, checking off is not a leaf blower requirement. Another issue I had with it was when building it, the back fan is tethered to the case so the only way to remove it is by cutting the cable I meaning you can't use it in another build or put it somewhere else in the case which is a little annoying but it has the five and a quarter inch bay and it has solid build quality as well as for the cd drive i went with the higher end model of a pioneer drive i'll have the model number right here i don't remember what it was but it has faster read and write speeds um and it's located right over here this little thing comes off and there's a little storage bay that if you want to have any screws, USB drives, things like that, you can put them in there. And then on top of that, you have the drive. Just some build notes. If you're going to build in this case with a five and a quarter inch bay, make sure to offset the drive a little bit inside the case because what ended up happening is when I first built in the PC, when I put the cover on, it would press the button on the CD drive. So it would open back up and push the this little cover off and you put it back on, it's like a machine that turns off itself. It's really weird. Just make sure you inset it a little bit so it doesn't press the button. As for power supplies, just get one with a high efficiency rating, 80 plus gold and above, and the wattage you need. I went with 750 watts in the Be Quiet Pure Power 12M. It is slightly overkill, but if he wants to add a GeForce card in the future, he doesn't have to worry about replacing the power supply. It's also really quiet at idle and I can barely hear it. Even at load, you can barely hear it as well. It's GPU time. As before, Quadro cards are the way to go. Trading softwares are all about 2D graphics, lines, vectors, things like that. So there's no need to spend hundreds of dollars on a GeForce card that's meant for 3D graphics, 3D games, things like that. And the lower end Quadro series of cards offers really good price and performance for 2D graphics. I remember when I started this channel, I started with the Quadro P620 in my first trading PC build video. Then I switched to the T400 slash T600. And now I went with the Quadro A400. These cards are meant for 2D graphics, stability, and supporting multiple monitors. The great thing about this GPU is that it actually runs at PCIe X8 speeds, meaning if you get a motherboard with two X16 slots, it'll split them into X8 and X8, so you can run both cards at full PCIe bandwidth. He doesn't see himself adding another four monitors in the future, so I didn't go with the motherboard that has another full size X16 or X8 slot, so we don't have to worry about that. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Also, I hope you guys got a little insight into how I think when building these computers, how I think when I spec them out so you guys can replicate my thought process. I have a really fun time doing this. So if you're interested in any workstation, trading, 3D artists, anything, feel free to email me right over here or click the link down below. It's a form to my website. I love to build these PCs, makes me really happy. And thank you, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.